Hi everyone, welcome to episode 11 of the ARM Template Masterclass. This week we're going to be taking a look at how you can use Key Vault to securely pass in secrets into your template. It's inevitable when you're working with ARM templates that you're going to want to be able to pass in a secret to your template. A VM password or a SQL admin username or a SAS token to go and fetch a nested template. And you're going to want to make sure that you pass those in securely. You don't just want to be throwing around plain text. You don't just want to be throwing around plain text secrets everywhere because they'll be very easy for someone to intercept and get hold of your admin passwords and so on. So one way to deal with this is store all your secret information in Azure Key Vault. Key Vault is a secure store for secrets that's encrypted at rest and accessible only to those who actually have rights to get these secrets. And so it's a pretty useful place to store all of your secrets in a central location and then have your applications and in our case templates, go and reach out to the Key Vault and grab those secrets when we need them. Key Vault has been built to actually work with ARM templates directly, but it needs a bit of setup to make it work. So in this episode, we're gonna have a look at how you configure Key Vault to work with ARM templates, and then how you write your templates to actually extract those secrets. So the first thing you're going to need, obviously, is a Key Vault. So I've deployed one here. It's just a plain old go through the new wizard to create a Key Vault. Um, the standard SKU works fine. You don't need the premium SKU for this. And in that Key Vault, we've created a secret that we're going to use as our admin password for a SQL server we're going to deploy. So we've just created a secret like I've got here, and it's got the password stored in it. To use a secret in our deployment, we need to make a couple of changes to the Key Vault. So first thing, we need to go into Access Policies. And up here, you can see we've got a couple of tick boxes. And we need to check the box here that says Azure Resource Manager for Template Deployment. So we tick that, that allows the Azure Fabric to access the Key Vault. And this is one of the nice features of um, the ARM integration with Key Vault. The person who's running the deployment doesn't actually need to be able to read the secrets in Key Vault. So you can keep these secrets and actually keep them away from the people who are using them. And it's the ARM Fabric at runtime that goes and gets those secrets. But that only works if you tick this box. The other thing you need to do is you need to grant the person who is going to run the deployment or the service account or whatever you're going to use, it needs to have the microsoft.keyvault forward slash vaults forward slash deploy forward slash action permission. And this is granted by default if you are the owner or contributor on the vault in the RBAC permissions. But if you're not, then you need to grant this permission either by giving them one of those roles or you can create a custom role that actually includes that right. That role doesn't actually give me any ability to actually read the content of the vault because it's just an RBAC permission on the vault. Key Vault itself has a set of its own permissions which control who can actually access the resources in the vault itself. So here in the documentation, you can see an example of a custom role that includes that um, permission to be able to do that. So once we've set these two things up, the Key Vault itself is ready for us to use it in our deployment. So there are actually two ways to access a, a secret in Key Vault. And which one you use depends on what you need to achieve. So the first method we're going to look at here, which is the one I use most of the time, allows you to specify the Key Vault reference as part of your parameters file. This is the simplest and easiest approach, but it doesn't work if you need to dynamically change the Key Vault or the secret name at runtime when you run the template. Because it's all stored in the parameters file, the parameters file doesn't accept any sort of parameters itself, um, so we can't do that. But if you know the vault the secret is going to be coming from and you know which secret it is, then this is by far the easiest approach. We'll have a look in a minute at a second approach where you can be more dynamic about where the secret's coming from. But I personally find I don't use that approach very often. So in this template, we're just going to deploy a SQL server and we've got a few parameters that we need to be able to pass into the SQL server. Two of those are fairly straightforward. The administrator login, which is a string to determine what the username is going to be and the SQL Server name, which again is another string. The interesting one is the admin password parameter, which is what we're going to pull from Key Vault. And the only requirement we have in our actual template for this is it needs to be a secure string. You can't use a plain old string for this for obvious reasons. It must be a secure string. And that's all we need to do in our actual template. Where it gets more interesting is in the um, parameters file itself. So the parameter file supports a syntax which allows you to point a parameter at a key vault to go and retrieve that. So we've got our admin password parameter value, and instead of just having the value equals x, what we've got is a reference section. And that allows us to point to somewhere else. In this case, a key vault, so you can see the key vault section. 
and then we pass in the ID of the key vault. So that's the full resource ID, including the subscription, the resource group, and so on. And then the second property is the name of the secret itself. That's all you have to provide. So long as you've set up the permissions like we talked about in a minute, a minute ago, then this is all you have to do to have it go and look up that value from key vault and pass it into your template when it's run. But as you can see, we're hard coding in there the name of the key vault and the name of the actual secret. So that only works if you know up front what they are. If you do need to dynamically alter either the key vault name or the secret name, then you'll need to look at this second approach. And it's not really a completely different approach. It's actually using the first approach we talked about, but in a slightly different way through the use of nested templates. So if you haven't looked at the previous videos, episode 10, that talks about nested templates, I would recommend you review that before you look at this. So we've got our template here, and we're passing in some parameters that determine which key vault and which secret we're going to look at. So we pass in the vault name, the secret, and the resource group and subscription that have got the key vault in. Those are our parameters. You'll notice there's no parameter there for the actual value from key vault because that will come later. So further down in the template, we've got our actual resources and you can see we're using an inline nested template. Now you could achieve this with a, a link template as well. It doesn't have to be inline, but this is just to simplify the example. And in here, we actually have parameters like we had with the previous template. We have the admin login, the admin password is a secure string and the location. So in reality, all we're really doing is doing exactly what we did in the previous template, but we're doing that in a nested template. And the key to that is a bit further down where we pass in the, vet, the, the parameters. So in the resource section, we just got our SQL server like we had before. But if we look in the parameters section, you can see again, we've got this admin password with a reference to key vault. So it's exactly the same. But because it's the nested template, you're able to pass parameters into the top level template which can then be used to form the parameter for the admin password for the actual ID of the vault in the nested template. And that's how you can actually vary those things at runtime because all, when you run this template, you're just running the top level template and passing in those values, which are then consumed and used in the nested template. So as I say, it's not really a completely new approach. It's a bit of a hack really, um, but it uses the, the fact that you're using a nested template which is called from the top level template to be able to dynamically reference that key vault. I don't use this approach very often. It's not often that I actually have a key vault I need to dynamically vary. Um, it's usually a static key vault that has my passwords in, uh, but it is there if you need to use it. And you'll find that this nested approach is actually used in quite a few things where you need to be able to dynamically adjust things that are done in a template that need to be passed as parameters. And that's a very quick summary of how you can use Key Vault to provide secure parameters into your template. Hopefully that all made sense, but if you've got any questions, please feel free to add them in the comments section and I'll be happy to get back to you. Next week, we're going to be taking a look at how you can actually find the properties and parameters you need to use in your templates when you want to create certain resources. It's not always simple to actually find the properties that a particular resource needs. So we're gonna have a look at the different techniques we can use to actually determine how do we build our templates um, to deploy the resources that we want. Hopefully I'll see you there. Until then, have a great rest of your day.